Okay, so today we are going to see some uh, simulations of stochastic differential equations. Since uh, here the uh, students uh, have various different background, so I would not assume any expertise in any particular coding language. Uh, so what we are going to do is that we would um, use uh, just a spreadsheet, okay, which uh, everybody knows to some extent. And just using the spreadsheet, we would uh, see that uh, how to you know, simulate a stochastic process from a uh, stochastic differential equation. Okay, so when we uh, want to do that, we first uh, need to simulate a random variable, correct? Because stochastic differential equation uh, involves a random variable, correct? So, like you know, uh, Brownian motion. Okay, so we would see first how to simulate a Brownian motion. Before that, uh, one must also see how to simulate a normal random variable, correct? Because Brownian motion has independent increments and the increments are normal random variables. Okay, so we proceed in the following manner. We would first see that how to simulate a uniform random variable on interval 0 to 1 uh, that is actually you know a default function given in almost every language so spreadsheet also has one particular library function but uh, for generating a normal random variable there is no particular library function but using uh, by composing two different library functions we will be able to do that and then from that we would see how to simulate a Brownian motion and then we would see that uh, how to uh, simulate a stochastic process from a given SD. Okay, so we start from here. So this is a new sheet where we would like to see that uh, how to simulate. So let me write down, simulate a uni form random variable variable on closed 0 1 okay so here I call that x is equal to so here I write down is equal to sign r a n d and then write down this parenthesis okay and press enter what we get a number between 0 and 1 so now if we press uh, f9 that is a calculation key then it would recalculate however for some technical reason i would not press the f9 key i'd rather use delete button okay so i would um, place my selection to some blank cell and press delete button so we are going to see different different you know realization of the random variable okay so all the time we are getting a number between 0 and 1 and these numbers are random sample from the population of which has you know distribution uniform on interval 0 1 Okay, so one can ask that, okay, how can I be sure that this is uh, really coming from uniform distribution? I mean, that is also not difficult. One can actually, you know, have instead of one particular cell, say 100 particular, 100 cells with the same uh, random variable. So, and then one can plot histogram, okay, or say empirical CDF, okay. So from that one can see that, okay, it is uh, coming from that uh, distribution. Okay, so we are going to do that uh, later for some, but for uniform we would not do that because it is coming from the library function. So you take it, uh, we take it for granted that it is coming from uniform random distribution on interval 0, 1. Okay, so now we take n, n is a normal random variable, okay, so that we would like to generate, okay. So what we uh, do is that we take inverse of the CDF of normal random variable okay and that we compose with this uniform random number so then the 
a result what we are going to get would be a random variable but that would have distribution you know according to standard normal random variable okay so let us see that so here we see uh, normal uh, inverse so normal inverse so this is the inverse of uh, cdf okay uh, here one should uh, pick up this probability to be this okay so inverse and mean to be zero and standard deviation to say one because standard normal we want and then we close so now here what we are getting here is a random number not between zero and one but so here this one is uh, it could be any real number minus infinity plus infinity and However, it is coming from the population. This is this is a random sample from the population of uh, uh, normal distribution with mean zero and variance one. Okay, so let us uh, see various different realizations. So so far it is all positive because uh, the way we have uh, defined when capital X value that means this second row this thing is half or more than half then this n is non-negative. Okay. However, if uh, this uh, is less than half, then you see that n is negative. And that is quite expected because normal random variable is half of the time, which means zero is half of the time positive, half of the time negative, okay? So we see that sometimes it is uh, positive and sometimes it's negative, okay? So now here, this is the point when one can ask that, okay, uh, is it really coming from normal random variable? Let us see the distribution. Okay, so for that, what we do is that we would generate one, you know, array, okay, array of uh, this, okay. So we start here. So is equal to normal inverse, and instead of probability, I write down here directly rand okay so this rand is the uniform distribution from 0 to 1 and then mean is 0 and variance is 1 okay okay so we are getting some number and then i drag it for 100 such things okay so i go to so this is coming from 4 a103 and from here to here I select and then I copy this formula down okay so we have now 100 different realization of a normal random variable with mean 0 and variance 1 okay and now here we would like to you know see that how what is the CDF we can plot histogram or something but here we plot so here what we do we take a rank rank of this thing okay so this number comma uh, then this whole uh, list whole array okay so that is giving me rank of this number okay and then i would like to keep this array as it is so we put dollar before the row number row name so that if i drag the formula handle the list selection does not change okay so now we are done with the putting formula now we drag it so this is the rank of these numbers now if we just plot so the, here these numbers are between you no know, one to hundred because these are ranks correct these are ranks but if i want to draw it versus you know so it's like you know one to zero to one then you have to divide by 100 okay so let us do that is equal to this divide by 100 so that now it is ranked between zero to one not between one to 100 okay so here we drag the formula down so we got this thing so now we just uh, uh, insert a scatter plot okay so here 
uh, this thing I don't need so I just delete this thing so this thing I need so it is coming the reverse direction ranking so I so so that it looks like CDF I should put ranking uh, from ascending order okay so then it would look like proper CDF so that we do here yes now it looks like a proper CDF correct so see that it is a it looks like a CDF the cumulative distribution function of normal random variable correct so with mean 0 and variance 1 here I mean we did not have any realization beyond minus 3 and plus 3 and then here it looks like this okay so this make, made us quite confident that what we have simulated is indeed a normal CDF uh, coming from normal random variable okay so I delete this thing okay so now if I want to simulate a Brownian motion okay using this random variable what are you going to do we are have to you know uh, add small small normal random variables okay uh, as increments and then proceed okay so that we do here so here first we do the time axis say for example this my column e is my time axis so so i write on time time okay so and then increment granularity you have to choose so let us choose that uh, say 0 0.1 okay so delta t is equal to say 0 0.1 okay so then uh, time starts with say so zero is actually brown motion is zero so we do not need to simulate anything so time zero and this is the brownian motion brownian motion okay so now here the next time step would be first is zero next time step, step is equal to the above one plus uh, this delta this thing however we don't need want to move this because the delta t this value would should remain as it is uh, as we move the formula handle so here we would go to you know 100 steps so we go at 103 and then we create the time axis so time axis is done okay so here last number should be like 10 9.9 .9, huh? last number is 9.9 .9. so time axis is done now for brownian motion what we need to do is that we need to recall the definition of brownian motion there if the increment size is delta uh, then uh, the brownian motion increment is normal random variable with mean zero and variance delta okay variance delta so here the normal random variable what we have obtained here had variance one okay so if we uh, multiply with the standard deviation with this then we are going to get okay so what is the standard deviation variance is delta and the standard deviation is square root of the delta okay so here delta is 0 0.1 okay so what i do is that is equal to so brown motion is increment right so for earlier thing whatever i had plus okay so now square root so sqrt square root of this number if f2 uh, okay f2 f2 okay so square root closed multiplied with this normal random variable what we have uh, done already in the a column okay so that would give me the brownian motion value at time 0 0.1 okay good now what we are going to do we are going to get the whole realization so that i have selected f column 100 many and then we press down so 
what we have obtained is the simulation of Brownian motion here. Okay. But we would like to check that how does it look like. Okay, so we are going to do that. We are going to plot it. We are going to insert one scatter plot here. Okay, so that is giving me you know a particular realization of Brownian motion. Okay, good. And if we recalculate, so we are going to get another sample of Brownian motion. So let us see. So I pray I go to a blank cell and press delete. So that would request spreadsheet to recalculate the sheet. So we would get a fresh set of new uh, random numbers would be generated and then from that whole path would be generated. Okay. So we see that here we have zero. So at time zero Brownian motion is zero. But then when we run several times so here it is going negative okay but sometimes you know it goes also positive okay so like this goes positive so this is actually not precisely a brownian motion this is more or less a random walk type of things however here uh, this is an approximation brownian motion okay because here uh, with this granularity of 0 0.1 okay so but uh, if you want uh, better accuracy you should have much smaller granularity instead of 0 0.1 maybe 10 to the power minus 3 or something however i mean so so these are the way to simulate a brownian motion okay so now we go to the case when we have a stochastic differential equation so in the last week's lecture we have seen brownian bridge right so that uh, satisfies a certain stochastic differential equation Okay, and then we have also seen a particular realization of the solution of that is D. Okay, and Brownian bridge has a very nice path. Okay, that particular realization we have seen that it was, you know, going from 0 to 1. Okay, and then uh, so we would like to see that uh, code. Okay, how to do that. So I come to Brownian bridge. So this page. So here, just as before, what we have done, we have taken a time axis. So this uh, column A is time axis. So here increment is uh, dt, dt is equal to 0 0.01, okay, so 0 0.01 increment. And here, so we have 0 0.01, 0 0.02, 0 0.03, etc. We have done it for 102. Correct? So that we get uh, exactly 101 number of points, okay, so that uh, last number is 1, okay. So we have partition of 0 to 1 with 101 number of points or in other words 100 number of sub intervals. Okay, so here what we are simulating is the Brownian bridge from uh, point 0 to point 1. So this is point 0, this is point uh, 1. So see 1 is here, 0 is here. So this is the time axis, horizontal axis is the time axis and here vertical axis is the Brownian bridge value. So let me do this so that it looks better. Okay, it looks good. Now we, um, before explaining the formula here, so let us see how realization changes if we ask the sheet to recalculate. So here uh, it changes. So the bridge point 0 and 1 is pinned here. So um, sometimes Brownian bridge is also called pinned process, correct? So pinned here and we see that for various different realization we are seeing various different paths connecting 0 and 1, okay? Okay, good. So this plot clearly shows that uh, uh, the code, whatever we have written, you know, so that is doing what it's supposed to do. Okay, so let us see uh, the code here. So this code is very simple. It's just a spreadsheet application. So now we recall the stochastic differential equation that is dxt is equal to xt divided by 1 minus t dt plus dwt. Okay, so what we do is that 
here the increment is dxt so we look at the increment so whenever i write on increment so this is like you know every cell is increment plus the earlier time so uh, earlier value so earlier value first value is 0 so 0 plus so b2 is 0 correct b2 is 0 so it depends on many things it depends on b2 so this is 0 and also it depends on the b value and a value so b value is here 1 okay so b is equal to 1 and a is 0 okay so but a actually i mean a does not appear in the sd a appears in the initial condition okay so here f1 is basically b value minus b2 b2 is uh, this you know earlier state okay so this is 1 minus x okay so 1 minus x divided by 1 minus a2 a column is time column so it is 1 minus t okay so numerator you have 1 minus xt and the denominator you have 1 minus t and then h1 is the dt dt term 0.01 dt term this is a green color and then you have a brownian motion okay increment okay so the as we have seen earlier in the earlier sheet the normal random variable inverse cdf of the inverse of that okay and then uh, this rand so that is going to give me the pro probability of that and then with mean zero and variance square root of this dt okay so that is brownian increment so this whole quantity is the uh, dbt it, it stands for dbt okay okay so that is the formula here and then you know as we go down we see that uh, just you know so it started for b2 the b2 becomes b3 okay and a2 becomes a3 and all other things are as it is huh? so that uh, you know with respect to time you know 1 minus xt divided 1 minus t that only changes with time t and dbt is the same increment however independent realization so all the time you know a different cell calls for the same library function rand one gets independent realization of that uh, uniform random variable on zero one okay so that is the way it is done here okay i think i have pretty much explained how to simulate a brownian bridge uh, from the stochastic differential equation okay next we would see simulation of another uh, stochastic differential equation okay so let us simulate geometric brownian motion okay so that we can do actually on, on this uh, sheet itself but okay let us go to the earlier sheet four where we have simulated the brownian motion okay so the geometric brownian motion already we know the definition so let us recall So geometric Brownian motion that satisfies the following stochastic differential equation uh, that is d x t is equal to particular values a a times x t dt plus say b times x t d w t correct so that is the equation stochastic differential equation for geometric brownian motion so as before we have to you know specify what value of a and b we are going to select here so let us write down those okay so say a is equal to uh, say we take say one just one okay and b is equal to we also take this say one okay so a is equal to one b is equal to one and then dt we also need to specify say we select the same dt as 0 0.1 okay so same dt we take and then here we would like to write down this xt that is geometric brownian motion okay xt so i write down gbm here yeah? gbm gbm okay so 
now we i mean gbm has actually this sd has a strong solution and the strong solution it has also a closed form okay we know that uh, we can actually simulate from the uh, closed form solution itself however for many sd one does not have closed form solution so we were actually you know trying to learn how to simulate uh, from the sd itself so here we uh, would uh, simulate from this sd so this is a starting point i should uh, mention what should be this so starting point say x0 uh, is equal to say um, can I put zero? No, I cannot put zero because uh, if it starts from zero, right hand side becomes zero because a times zero dt plus b times zero dwt. So dx2 would be zero. So increment would be zero throughout the time horizon. So the whole process would be just trivial zero process. Okay, so that is the reason that we would not put zero but some x. Okay, so a is equal to say 1, b is equal to 1, small x is equal to say also that we put at 1. Okay, so now we have fixed all the parameters what we need. Now we can, so let us make it a little smaller. Yes. Okay, so here is equal to the first initial point would come from here, x is equal to 1. Okay, now dxt okay dxt so that is equal to a times but a is i2 but these parameters we do not want to move so we put dollar before the row number and then times xt just the earlier time that is this quantity plus b b is k2 so k two times dwt so dwt here already we have come up with uh, the you know increments brownian motions so these are the uh, increments square root is qrt square root of dt dt is same as here okay uh, multiplied with this uh, standard normal this thing okay so you got a realization here so we got this value here so as before so here we have done see for brown in motion the earlier value plus square root of f2 okay square root of f2 plus a5 correct i mean e into a5 a5 is the normal standard normal uh, variable so here we are doing exactly the same thing here so far this uh, brownian motion part is concerned that k2 is b times square root of f2 times a5 okay so this part is as before but only one thing is that here we have a drift term that is coming beginning in the beginning so that is a times xt uh, dt okay so i forgot to write on dt here so good that i have revised so dt okay so dt is again this thing with f2 i have to put a dot okay good now it looks good so we are going to plot 100 many such realization successively so that we do here uh, down okay good okay so we go back above and we try to plot okay so we try to plot this thing by inserting a uh, this plot okay so this plot came very nicely so here we uh, i mean the brownian motion so earlier plot of brownian motion appears here 
and here uh, we get the plot of both Brownian motion and geometric Brownian motion where the green thing is the geometric Brownian motion and the blue uh, curve is the Brownian motion okay so let us put this little above okay so now one can ask that what would happen if I change those parameter A and B, okay? So of course, I mean, the, then the car would look different, okay? See, if my B is very small, then uh, the Brownian motion effect would be minimal. So the variation would also be very small. On the other hand, if B value is very large, then the variation uh, fluctuation would also be quite large. So let us uh, do this small, you know, trivial experiment here. Says B is very small, 0 0.001, say, okay, very small value. See, this green thing is uh, almost, it is like flat. It is not fluctuating at all. So, on the other hand, if I put B is equal to say zero directly, then it is just, you know, like, you know, uh, exponential decay. It's like a OD, solve solution of the OD, correct? From one, it converges to zero. Now, if my B is not small, but not large in between, say, 0 0.5, then we see that uh, compared to the Brownian motion, the blue li line, okay, the GBM fluctuation is less, but it is uh, very close to zero. However, now we ask the other side of question, that of when B is very large, say I put B is equal to 10, then we see that due to the rescaling of this graph, you know, this blue line looks flat, which is brown motion and green line, you know, is going away, okay, so the variation. Okay, so now we come back to say B is equal to one case, okay, and then we talk about how does the solution behave by changing A value. So A is 1 here, so instead of 1, if I put a large value, say 100, so then we see that it goes, uh, it becomes very, very large. So that is too large, okay. I mean, like exponentially it is increasing, uh, hardly you can see anything. So we put not this much large, say only, say, value 3, okay, or maybe, say, say 10, okay. So when I put uh, a value is equal to say 10, then we see that, I mean, it is like matching magically, you know, both are like, you know, going like parallel kind of things, okay. However, if we put uh, a little smaller value, say five, then we see that uh, this coming like this. So now we look at the negative values. So for negative values, it should uh, go down, okay, to zero. So that is happening actually, but is going down to zero. Okay, so now we have a pretty good understanding that how it moves. Now putting x value instead of one, say starting from above, say 10. So then it starts from above and then slowly it comes to zero. On the other hand, if x value is just zero, as we expect, it should be flat. Okay, so so here we are not getting exactly flat thing okay i think i have uh, missed uh, one very important uh, thing that's why so it was uh, a dangerous typo equal to this plus ha ah, yes it was a dangerous typo um Put it here, down, yes, good. So now it is a proper geometric Brownian motion. Earlier we had a dangerous typo. So here now if we put x is equal to zero, it is mostly zero and then some fluctuation is appearing here. But if we put x is equal to one, okay, so let me place a small value of a and b. 0.1 b is equal to 0.1 so then as before you know that uh, small variation so green line is almost same and then large variation 
for 10 so green line is varying very largely on the other hand for uh, a and b you know b is one so it is like going almost like parallel kind of thing and then if x is equal to not one but uh, starting from a small number say uh, zero so then it looks like this okay uh, thank you very much